Thank you, Matt. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk today in respect to the Sequoia Financial Group to the Financial News Network audience. I'd like to um, make a couple of points in respect to the disclaimer today. Um, firstly, everything I talk about today is general information only, and it's not taking into account anyone's personal circumstances. It's general advice in nature completely. Um, that is particularly important for Sequoia is because a lot of our business is about personal advice and, and providing the community advice. And the second point I would like to disclose particularly is that Sequoia Financial Group is the owner of the Financial News Network and Yield Report, another business of providing information to the public. And I think it's important that I disclose that um, for the listeners today. I have four main agendas that I'm looking to um, inform the, 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 um, the audience today of. And if I can achieve these four agendas, I think I've, um, I, I would be happy. One, one of the things I think is really important from our point of view is that um, investors understand what we do. And, and that is one of the things that I'm going to talk briefly about, try and give you an understanding what Sequoia does, um, discuss the four divisions and 20 companies that make up the business within the group. I will then move to discussing the financials that were recently reported to the ASX for the half year 2022. We um, released our results last Thursday, and I will expand on the company's shorter term growth focus. And then finally, um, I will look to provide some clarity on the size of the opportunity that we see and the company's medium term revenue and EBITDA growth targets for full year 25. So we've been, we've been talking for about three or four years now about um, trying to build a business um, as a tortoise rather than a hare towards 2025 when we're starting to see a business that's beginning to mature. So we're still very early days and we're on the growth focus, but I just wanted to make that point. Talking about what we do, and I think this is, is particularly important for, for any investor. We talk about it as financial planners all the time. If you don't know what a company does, you shouldn't invest. And what, what we do is we are basically servicing the intermediary market. There's, so the intermediary market in financial services. Um, so there's 16,000 authorised representatives providing advice currently under 2,000 AFS, AFSL licences in Australia. There's approximately 10,000 accountancy practices in Australia. Um, in our opinion, these two groups of gatekeepers tend to be small to medium sized businesses and they are under price pressure to provide the community a value proposition and they need a range of services from external providers to be able to be cost effective to their end client base. In fact, there's not enough accountants and there's not enough financial planners to realistically serve the current community. Um, the Sequoia business therefore, um, and this is our true investment proposition, is entirely based on providing a numerous services to these parties. So the 26,000 odd um, individuals that are providing advice, whether it be an accountant or a financial planner, are our core client. And we're looking to think of everything that we can do to provide services to that community to make their business more cost effective and better. Um, the market size itself is the entire financial services market and it's huge. There's $14 trillion of private wealth. And of that private wealth that's currently had, 6.6 .6 trillion is sitting in managed investment funds of some kind. Um, the community that we're talking about provides the advice to much of um, that money. Um, whilst there's a lot of people doing self-direct investment, there's a lot more, um, particularly the high-end worth, that are actually seeking the advice of their accountant, their financial planner, they're doing it as a trustee of a self-managed super fund, or in some cases, they're the wholesale investor. And they're the type of clients we're looking to provide services to. There's a, a massive intergenerational wealth passing through families um, in the next 15 years. And there's a lot of people um, coming into retirement and looking to capitalise on either downsizing um, their family home that's gone up in value a lot, um, and then using that capital that they generate from that downsizing to look to invest in financial markets. Um, over the last three to five years, the markets have been very, very bullish and the self-direct investor has done very well. Um, however, um, the financial planner and what we're doing at Sequoia is the tortoise rather than the hare. And we are looking, um, and our financial planners are looking to provide clients with long-term financial planning solutions using strategy, a mix of um, various fund managers, a mix of different um, asset classes, and looking to build and protect their wealth on a um, 
tortoise type um, environment. Um, and you know, we cer we're certainly not in, um, discouraging people to try and do it themselves and look to um, invest in sort of the, you know, the cryptocurrencies or the type of investments that direct investors might like to make, but that is not our market. We're, we're looking to provide strategic advice and provide those that give that strategic advice the services that they need to make it cost effective for the end investor. How do we do that? Um, we, we do that by, as I mentioned before, providing that end gatekeeper, um, being the accountant and the financial planner, a whole range of services. We do it across four divisions. Um, our wealth division is primarily providing financial planners a license. Currently, we license 400 um, financial advisors in three licenses, Interprac Financial Planning, Libertas Financial Planning and Sequoia Wealth Management. Two of those licenses are traditional financial planners. One of those licenses being Sequoia Wealth Management is stockbrokers. We also have an in-house team um, in Interprac Securities where we're actually the advisor themselves. Um, the business has been buying retiring advisors as client books and employing advisors to service that client base. So that is a strategy that we've under, um, understood um, one year ago, I'm sorry, 18 months ago, there was about 25,000 advisors. Today, there's 16,000 advisors. A lot of the advisors um, have retired, you know, were in the 65 to 70 year old bracket, didn't want to necessarily go and do degree um, qualifications. So they've been looking to transition out of the business as they reach their retirement and Sequoia has been acquiring those businesses. Also in the wealth division, just finally, we have two other areas. So one is the high net worth business. We have a, a Sequoia family office business that's providing advice to those um, Australians that have a family office business with sort of $5 million plus. A lot of that is particularly in the Asian community where we're, where, um, we're supporting the SIV investors and also the high net worth um, Asian investor that lives in Australia. Um, that's a very big market and, and we think we've got a specialty there. And finally in wealth, we also have the corporate finance arm. So where we're doing IPOs, equity capital market raises and providing um, niche opportunities to our financial network. The second area is professional services and particularly this area is looking to service the accountancy practice. We're dealing currently with around 3,000 accountancy practices in this business. And what they do is they buy their documents from us. So they buy it when their client is setting up a, a company, a trust or a superannuation fund for their client, because um, they're starting up a business, they come to us and we set up that structure for them. It's a high volume business. We're doing around 120 to 130 new structures per day and it's across a number of brands. We've been doing this for a long time and we've had an acquisition strategy in this particular area. We're also providing accountants their general insurance needs. So we provide professional indemnity insurance for around about 1,000 accountancy practices. And some of those accountancy practices are now referring us their general, their sort of higher end clients uh, to provide general insurance solutions to them. And finally, the other thing we do in the professional service area is we provide self-managed super fund administration. Um, where an accountant or a financial planner doesn't necessarily have the skill and the resource to um, do the administration of the SMSF, but they have clients in their tax practice or their financial planning practice who have an SMSF and they need the administration done. So we're an outsource provider to that market and that is an area of the market we're looking to um, certainly grow in. Equity markets is two businesses in particular. One is that Morrison's business is a stockbroking clearer. Um, we currently clear for around 60 AFSLs. We are not in the discount stockbroking market to retail investors. We are in the market to provide um, services to AFSL holders and financial planners and accountants. Um, our average trade in the Morrison business is, is $90,000 per ticket. So we're, we're so at the higher end clearing and execution in that market. And as I said, we have um, around 60 AFSLs that currently use us. That business has been growing at a very quick rate, um, around 100% increase in turnover in the last 18 months, and it continues to grow. We're not um, a victim of, the, of the, the highs and lows of the market as such, because the financial planner is sort of, uh, you know, he's not the day trader, he's not the person looking to do a $2,000 trade for $9. He's, he's looking for a high level of service he wants a DTR, he wants dividend investment plans, he wants someone to talk to when he's doing their trade, 
um, and so on. And we're, we're looking to capture that market and we are, and it's going very well. We also have a Sequoia specialist investment business. And what we're doing there is we have a lot of sophisticated investors, we have a lot of financial planners, and we have a lot of accountants who are looking for thematic investing. Um, and from time to time, um, what we're doing is we're coming up with ideas, pricing that thematic um, with the top tier banks, and then offering it out to our distribution um, networks um, to recommend to their particular clients. Finally, the direct investment arm is Financial News Network, which um, I'm talking on today. It's um, Yield Report, um, it's Sequoia Asset Management, which is a general advice business, and, and it's basically providing services to the direct investment community. This particular business is an area we're looking to grow. We see the, um, a need for high quality content um, right across those 10,000 funds, right across every ASX company, right across every sector of the financial services market. And whilst our current financials in this area are a little bit disappointing, it is an area we're looking to grow in. Um, and as a um, subscriber to FNN, I can assure you that this is a business that we're looking to um, increase the breadth of the services and, and we will. We have a number of partners um, like Shaw Stockbroking um, on today's event um, and other providers that um, have an AFSL and they're looking for content and we're providing content to a whole range of different providers and we're looking to um, touch the community and provide you know, the highest quality content we can possibly provide in respect to all asset classes. I might just move to the financials quickly. Um, I'm aware of time. Um, the, the half year 22 financial results from our perspective were very good, um, but we're, we're not looking to um, grow the business in a, in a, in a manner like a, a dot-com business or a mining company where you might strike a gold mine. We're, we're very steady. Um, the results, this particular half compared to the other half show a number of, um, show very high growth. Some of that is from acquisitions, some of that is through organic, um, and we're continuing to improve all the, all the major factors that I consider when I'm looking to recommend a, a stock and when I'm looking to recommend a managed fund. So our EBITDA was up 38 point something percent, 38.5 percent, I believe, to 5.5 million um, compared to the previous period. All revenue um, in all four divisions increased at a high double digit. I'll touch on that shortly. We have no debt. Um, we have $17 million of current cash on our balance sheet. Um, in the first half, our operating cash flow and our EBITDA were very similar. We're generating about $900,000 per month of operating cash flow. Our first half is always a little bit lower than our second half, and that's primarily because accountants and financial planners tend to give more advice coming into the June 30 period um, when, when clients are looking for tax, tax effective solutions and they're looking for um, advice. General insurance broking tends to have a 30th of June renewal date, so always um, the Sequoia results are going to be slanted to the second half in respect to EBITDA. Revenues are probably similar, but EBITDA is certainly far higher in our second half. Um, in the second half, um, we're looking to generate $1.2 million per month of cash each and every month. The business is very steady. Um, the January result um, already reflects that we're on target to do that. We're, we're definitely looking to provide um, shareholder revenue, shareholder value, um, the management, the, um, the board, own more than 40% of the company. We absolutely have skin in the game. Um, we are looking to pay a fully frank dividend of half a cent and in the first half, but that's a very low um, payout ratio. We're paying 15% of our operating cash flow because we are looking to grow this business. Whilst we're up, you know, around about $130 million business at the moment in respect to revenue, we want to be a $400 million business. And we expect half of that growth to come from organic growth and half of that growth to come from acquisitions. The current capital structure is there's 132 million shares on issue. As I mentioned, cash at December 31 was 17.4 million. Our current share price is 75 cents roughly, so an enterprise value of $83 million. We would expect, um, based on that $1.2 million per month for the six months to end up the for year 22 at about $13 million of EBITDA. The EBITDA is pretty much cash. Um, 
in fact, we had a higher cash conversion to EBITDA in this particular half than, than one. Um, but I would think one or 0.95 is about what we would expect. So the current share price at 75 cents is trading on about 6.5 times operating cash or EBITDA. So in our opinion, not expensive. Um, quickly, I've mentioned before already um, the financial highlights, but just if you look at them in you know, on a case by cases in respect to the sort of key metrics that you look at when you're assessing a company, our revenue is 79.1 million for the half. That's up 51%. $9 million of that revenue um, would normally have gone into the second half. We actually closed some investments early. Um, we're a little bit fearful of markets. So we wanted to lock in some profit for some of our clients in the specialist investment areas. So that's a little bit more than what you would normally expect. It didn't impact the EBITDA, but I would have thought normalized the half year revenue was 70 million, um, but the 9 million would have come in the second half anyway. The operating cash um, net of um, tax was 3.4 cents per share um, and, the, and the operating cash flow was $5.9 million. Um, so as you can see, 0.5 cents against 3.4 cents of operating cash flow after tax is a very low payout ratio. Um, we would like to get to, as I said, $13 million of operating cash flow pre-tax before um, full year 22. Just going through the divisions, the wealth division is um, our equal largest division with the equity markets division. Um, we expect long-term for it to actually be our largest division. We expect it to, on the, in the longer term, to represent 45% of group revenue. We currently have 400 advisors that are licensed through those three licenses. We are in the acquisition mode and we are in the organic growth mode. We would like to get to 800 advisors by 2025. I would expect half of that growth will come from organic and half of that growth will come from acquisitions. Um, in respect to the acquisitions, because we have $17 million of cash and we're generating $1 million of cash per month, um, at least, we're funding acquisitions with cash. Um, we're not looking to issue lots of shares. We're not looking to do any capital raises for these acquisition targets I'm looking to make. Um, and we're looking to self-generate cash and use that cash for acquisitions when the owner of that business is a seller. Occasionally, we will come across opportunities where there's a merge opportunity and the owner of that business is looking to be part of a bigger group, come into the management team and be part of the longer term story. In those cases, we are prepared to give shares um, away to those parties um, because we want them to have skin in the game and we want them to have the feeling they haven't actually sold their business, they've just merged into our business and we're all one. Um, in the corporate finance equity capital markets, we're looking for 50 cent revenue growth in 2023. Um, we're getting, as we grow and, and the name and the brand improves and our capability to um, place um, opportunities into networks that are sticky money, um, more and more clients are looking to come to us to raise capital. Um, and what, what I would call um, not hot money, um, you know, people, that are in our network are not necessarily looking for the quick return. They're looking to buy an investment in a business or an asset that's actually going to grow in the long term. And I think our corporate finance department is a beneficiary of, of that thinking opposed to some other um, players in the market. The, the professional services division, as I touched on before, it provides documents and um, self-managed super fund administration and general insurance. Um, this particular business had a very, very good half year compared to the previous year. It's 113% up um, to 4.7 million for the half. Um, two years ago, I talked about hoping to have a three year, of, um, sorry, one year ago, I talked about having a three year target to get to $10 million of revenue in this business. This business is growing very quickly. The acquisitions that we made have been extremely positive. We're winning market share from our competitors and more and more accountants are recognised that we're the premium provider in the document establishment business, and we added a legal functionality to that. So the $10 million revenue um, number that I suggested a couple of years ago, I am now suggesting by 2025 that I expect revenue to head towards $40 million. This particular business has a high EBITDA margin. The wealth business is more like seven, seven or 8%. It's a very tight market and very competitive that this particular market is more of a software as a service type business and the margins are far more attractive and the sort of margins that um, 
you know, can Im improve the overall group um, return on revenue EBITDA. The equity markets division, again, as I mentioned, is the Sequoia Specialist Investments and the Morrison combination. As I mentioned earlier, this particular business is growing extremely strongly. Um, $40.8 million revenue for the half is 88% higher than the same period last year. We are looking to grow this particular business to be 40% of the group um, by 2025. So we're looking at $160 million of revenue by 2025. And we would hope to be at an eight to 10% margin on that. Um, EBITDA, as you can see, was $3.6 million on 40. So very strong and up very strongly. The direct investment division, which is where Financial News Network sits and Yield Report sits and some direct um, general advice um, is our smallest division, but it's our highest margin division. Um, currently, we're on track to do about $2.5 million of annual, annual revenue. It's about up 14% on the first half last year, so not that strong. Um, however, the margin in this type of business is extremely strong, um, and we would like to grow this divisional revenue 10 times from where it is currently. So we would expect to do $2.5 million this year, um, but we're looking to get towards $20 million by 2025. We have a, a number of um, opportunities that we're currently looking at in this particular area. Um, we're very excited about um, providing Australians, financial planners, accountants, self-managed super fund trustees, a source of information like no one else can do. Um, the, in, in some ways, um, what we hope to achieve, and this would be absolute success, just like Seek did for the employment market and realestate.com did for the real estate market, um, we would hope that we can be the, the um, single source of information for financial services market. So when a financial planner or an accountant or a self-directed investor wants to know about a particular fund, wants to know about a particular share, wants to know about a particular interest rate, that we can be the common source of information and we can deal with all the product providers in the marketplace to access, up to update that and provide independent journalism in respect to the provision of that. What does success look like? I, I talked about and I've touched on it through this presentation. This is not a forecast. This is what success looks like for us. This is what I'm talking to my management team about um, each and every day. Um, and this is what success would look like for me um, by 2025. We would like to provide at least one service. And we're talking we have 20 services to 30% of all accounting firms in Australia by 2025. Um, there is absolutely no reason why every accounting firm cannot access one of our services. The services are so diverse and the um, services are, are very well priced and definitely improve an accountancy practices business if they engage with us. And there's absolutely no reason why we can't um, reach 30%, but certainly would like to um, hope and, and wish that um, we could um, provide a service to every accounting firm in Australia at some time in our evolution, but 30% by 2025. We'd like to at least provide one service to 10% of all authorised representatives in Australia. Currently there's 16,000, so that target is 1,600. Um, a service of some kind, whether it's them being licensed with us, whether it's them using Financial News Network on their website, whether it's them buying their documents through us, whether it's them using Morrison's, whether it's using their self-managed super fund administration, I don't mind as long as um, we can achieve a relationship with 10% of the financial planners in Australia, provide them one service, build a relationship, and then over time, um, introduce them to more and more of our services and, and build a larger business. We also want to not compete with our competitors. We would like to engage with 25% of all AFSLs in some capacity. I'm of the belief that the current 2000 AFSL holders out there um, need um, scale, and I think that they, that it's most likely that there will be only 200 AFSLs by 2025 um, as scale drives the market um, and the pricing down. And if we can be providing 25% of the AFSLs, whether it is the 2000 or whether it is the 200 and, and they're much larger licenses, I'm not sure, that is our goal. Um, and the services that we do provide 
absolutely enhance an AFSL's um, um, performance to their advisors. And we would hope that we can um, uh, align with more of those. At the moment, we're providing service to about 80 other AFSLs, so well below that, that target and you know, lots of room for growth. As I touched on before, the goal is to reach 400 million top line revenue by 2025 and to achieve a minimum of 8% EBITDA and operating cash flow on that number. So I'm looking for $32 million of EBITDA, $32 million of operating cash flow on that 400 million of revenue by 2025. That would be success. That's, um, that, that would put us currently on about two times EV. So that, that would certainly be success. I would like to lift the current dividend ratio to 50% by then. So in our, um, in our belief, a $400 million revenue business generating $30 million of cash is starting to mature. Um, at that point in time, I don't believe I would need as much cash to reinvest back in the business to further grow. I would start to, to believe with 130 million shares on issue, um, 30, distributing $15 million of um, earnings in dividends would be an absolute um, success target myself and the board and the whole management team are looking to strive for and we would like to pay back more of our income to shareholders that have come along for the ride at that that point um, the point of reaching 400 million i mentioned before that we are particularly focused on looking to um, use our cash to increase the acquisitions some some will be um, you know, mergers, as I pointed out, but we're looking to reward short shareholders with strong capital management, and we definitely want to avoid heavy dilution in funding acquisitions. In the last 12 months, we, we've moved from around about 125 million shares on issue to 130 million shares on issue. All of the acquisitions we made um, this particular year um, have been extremely positive to the, to the long-term growth. And we've been able to do it without raising, to, issuing too many new shares. And those shares we did issue have gone to um, people who are now in our management. Um, in every single case where we've used our shares to date over the last three years, those shareholders remain as shareholders with Sequoia. And almost in every case, um, they've actually increased on market their participation. So the, the strategy of, um, giving cash to a business who's looking to sell and giving shares to a business who wants to be part of a merge is working currently. Touch wood, um, the acquisitions we've made to date have been very positive and in the future, our due diligence team and what we're looking for can continue to do that and um, reward our shareholders. In finishing, I'd like to thank you for listening. I hope you now understand a little bit more about Sequoia um, and who owns the Financial News Network. And I look forward to um, our full year result. And um, over time, I hope you um, put us on our watch list, on your watch list, and you can see that um, when we make a promise, we keep it um, just like any financial planner should always do. Um, I'd like to thank you um, for your time and I'll pass it back to you. Thank you, Matt.